Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. It's so great to have you here or wherever you might be today. We're going to start our service by singing our opening chant, Grateful. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is. Good morning. We're so glad you've joined us this morning on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all your moms out there. And so glad you're with us on Facebook Live or Zoom. And uh, next week, some of you in person. We're all very excited. So let's join together in prayer. Turning within. Let's just recognize that part of us at every moment seeks to feel good, seeks to feel happy, fulfilled, to love and be loved, and to recognize that as a vibration that fills this manifest universe. It is a vibration of God's love, God's life, out of which everything is created and that expresses itself through all that is. I know that each of us gathered for this virtual service this morning is an expression of God. And we feel the calling of the divine for a greater knowingness, a greater experience, a greater expression of itself through each of us. And I absolutely know that every part of this service supports that intention, that God is flowing through all that un unfolds in this time together. We feel the love of the divine in which we all feel interconnected, the love that inspires each person who is of service this morning, the love and creativity that flows through our musicians, Sam and Karen, and our soloist, Harold, and Diane, as she leads us in our chants. And I know we hear the message of the divine through Dr. Mark this morning, that this is the message we've come to hear, to awaken to that truth of our divine nature, to feel that connection with it and to experience and express it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right now for all the healing, all the blessings that occur in this time together and in gratitude I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
And so now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song. It's in every one of us. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us. Okay, so now let's take a few moments to get still and to commune with that presence that's in every one of us. So for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get still, to close your eyes, and to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
our mom and all our moms. Happy Mother's Day. So if you are a mom, we want to acknowledge you and give you lots of love and appreciation today. I think uh, my mother was my first spiritual teacher, and I suspect that that's true for lots of us. So happy Mother's Day to all of you who are moms, or if you put that mothering energy into our world, God knows we need lots of it. Uh, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, and my own mother uh, passed this year. And so, of course, thoughts of her are with me uh, very, very often, and I pray for her every day. And so I thought I'd share with you how, um, how I specifically do that. And it's very simple. It's something you've heard me say probably uh, multiple times. But every day when I uh, do my prayers for my family, I, say, I, I praise mom, I raise mom in the name of love. I praise mom, I raise mom in the name of love. I praise mom, I raise mom 
In the name of peace, I praise mom, I raise mom. In the name of peace, I praise mom, I raise mom. In the name of freedom, I praise mom, I raise mom. In the name of freedom. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I do that. And then, um, because, you know, um, I think I used to believe that when people passed on, that was it. The learning was done. Um, I don't subscribe to that anymore. I believe that everyone's learning continues on. That when we check out of this hotel, we're just checking into another. And that the lessons that we did not complete here, we will, at some point, get to review those courses again in the future. Um, you know, uh, so in, in my process of, of healing um, around, uh, and this is true around anyone, but since it's Mother's Day, I was hoping to give you um, a couple of tools maybe, um, that if you are someone who has any energy that's not perfectly peaceful around your mother, my encouragement would be to pray like this. I forgive my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. Just like we chant, God's the love that I am. So, I forgive my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. Now, if you keep up with that, eventually that will change because all of that forgiveness will be complete. And what I found for myself is that evolves into, I am grateful to my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. So how can I go from forgiveness to gratitude for the same thing? Because ultimately what we realize in consciousness is that everything came to serve our growth, that everything was for our spiritual growth, for our evolution, for us to progress. So it wasn't that it was done to us, it was actually done for us, for our growth, for our evolution. So I offer you that today as a way to uh, continue to pray uh, for your mother, whether she's here still on earth with us or has moved on to the next expression. Um, so today I was going to talk about the, the miracle of today, and, and I think that this is really so, that there are two ways to look at life, and one is to look at life like everything is a miracle or to look at life like nothing is a miracle. So I'm certainly on the side of the street where everything, everything is a miracle. And I think this is just a much better way for us to be in life because then we have sort of an awe and appreciation and wonder and all of that for what life presents us. You know, life, we believe in the science of mind, is a living presence, and it's around us, and it's in us. It is absolutely right where we are, the principle of life. Now, in the Bible, it says, be still and know that I am God. So the Bible is the journey of consciousness that each of us are on. So the Bible is not about people thousands of years ago. The Bible is about us right now and the spiritual path that we are living. Be still and know that I am God. There is God within each and every one of us. Now, looking at Jesus as our master teacher, that we see Jesus in New Thought as the great example of what we might become, Jesus had a slightly different approach from others because he had this great level of acceptance that there is a power for good that is available, and it's available to everyone. And his use of this power amazed people because he was able to feed the multitudes and heal the sick and on and on and on. He said that the kingdom of God is at hand. And this kingdom contains everything we need for our fulfillment, for our happiness, for our well-being, for us to have a loving life. The kingdom contains everything we could possibly need, want, or desire. And it's at hand. I know, part of us says, well, if it's at hand, where is it? Why aren't I experiencing it? I could really use some of that right now. But see, life, the way it works is that life, the principle of life, waits for us to recognize its presence and engage and use its power. Right? So, so if, if, if we talk about a divine power, that would have to be a power for good that is ever available for all of us to use. This was one of the things that Ernest Holmes was so keen on when he developed our teaching, that there's a power for good and it's available for us to use, to work with at any given moment. So we didn't create the laws of the universe, 
right? Because this is what we do. We learn to work with the laws of the universe. Like, just like we don't create gravity, but we, we learn over time to work with it intelligently. We don't create buoyancy, but um, over time, if you were lucky, I, I was a sinker for years when it came to swimming lessons. I sank and sank and sank. And then I just got that idea of like, you know, if you just don't let any air out, you will float like a balloon. So that's buoyancy. I learned how to work with buoyancy or uh, the laws of electricity or thermodynamics. We learn to work with those things intelligently. We don't create the laws, but we learn to work with them so that we and others might benefit from their intelligent use. See, we're surrounded by a creative intelligence that acts upon our thought. So here we are in a sea of creative intelligence, and that creative intelligence is responding to what I think and say and feel and believe and imagine. This is the key to so much in life. Understanding this and working with this can bring something new and different and better into our life than we have ever known before. See, we don't see the laws of nature, but we see the effects of them. We know something about how they work. We can kind of cooperate with them and support them. You know, Jesus proclaimed the law of good that is available to everyone, right? And the law responds to your faith. So whatever your faith is right now, that's the way the law is responding to you. And it's a wonderful thing that our faith can always increase. We can always grow our faith because again, it's done unto you. You don't have to do it. I mean, when I hear that this time, it's done unto you. You and I, we don't have to do it because as you believe, you know, in the way you believe. So Ernest Holmes used to always open his radio show with this statement. He'd say, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And I love that. I just love that. I love that. And you can use it because the power reacts to our belief in it, right? It reacts, it responds to our belief in it. Jesus said, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. You ask incorrectly. So the power of God is good. It cannot produce evil. Let's just think about that for a second. God is good. The power of God is good. What God made, and this includes you and me and even Job in the Old Testament, God made us good. Therefore, we are good. Goodness is our nature. The power reacts to our belief in it. So if you believe that there's something wrong with you, that's what the power is reacting to. If you believe there's not enough for you, that's what the power is reacting to. If you believe that you will be alone for the rest of your life, that's what the power is reacting to. But if on the other hand, you believe God has somebody wonderful waiting in the wings, ready to rush into your life and love you, then that's what you will receive, right? The power of God is good. It cannot produce evil. But I think so often we're tempted to think God must need me to experience this difficulty. God must need me to experience this evil. God must want me to have this experience. I don't think that God does. I don't think God sends difficult experiences to us. I don't think that ever enters into divine consciousness. God only knows to give of itself and God's self is always good. Jesus said, while there is a power greater than you are that reacts to your belief, I think he was also telling us to be certain that our belief is in accord with the nature of that power. And I believe the nature of that power is generous. It's loving. It's uh, forgiving. It's grateful. It's abundant. It's all those wonderful things. And so you're in my thought. Our thought uses the power greater than we are. But remember, it's always a power for good. God is never not good. And so the kingdom of God is joy and peace and love and happiness and unity. And there's no restriction when we use this power for good. I love that. You can use this power for good to help your health. You can use this power for good to create a relationship. You can use this power to good to find a home. You can find, use this power for good to find somebody to live in that home with you. You know, it all counts. It's all available to us. 
a certain way of thinking, a certain way of belief unlocks the ever availability of God's good to us. Now, I think Jesus referred to this as faith, but it's also acceptance, it's trust in life, it's a wonderful, inclusive, large willingness on our part to receive. See, because I believe that the divine has placed the wealth of God's love and life at the center of our being. Now imagine this, God has placed at the center of our being you know, um, God's love and life. Wow, I don't have to go looking for it. I don't have to try and get a hold of it somewhere else. It's where I am and my job is to reveal that love of God, that life of God that's in within me. That's, that's what you're here to do and I'm here to do. We're here to reveal that Godness within. You know, it's not enough to know, though, that there's treasure within, right? We have to actually do some digging, I think. You know, that our thought is the digging instrument. Our belief, our faith is that instrument. Our power comes from our faith. I don't know about you, but my mind can be stubbornly resistant sometimes. I can hear a truth. It can make absolute sense to me. Like I'll hear some spiritual principle. I'll go, yes, that's it. That's what I must embrace. I must take this very seriously. This is exactly what I need to do. And then I don't. And then I don't. And I think part of it is that there's a part of my mind that knows that if I really embrace this principle, I'm going to change. And although I say I want to change, I want to be better, I want things to heal, there's a part of me that is comfortable in the old way. I suspect that might be true for you as well. So I just notice like, oh, there's my stubbornly resistant mind. Thank you. Thank you for doing your job. But we're not listening to you today. Today, we're going to go with faith, you know, because faith, faith has the capacity to break through to that treasure of love and life within. You know, it's, faith is like water. If we keep applying our faith, we will eventually get through. You know, water always finds a way in, doesn't it? If you've ever had a leak in your house, you know that water always finds a way. And, and you know, it's not that water, I thought about this, it's not that the water wears things down, it's that it's the consistency. See, it's the consistency of the water going over the rocks that make the rock smooth. It's not that water is somehow magical sandpaper, but if you do it long enough, there's going to be a change. And this is just like our consciousness. If we keep adding truth to our consciousness, if we keep praying, if we keep affirming, if we keep meditating, if we try to keep our heart open and know that everywhere I go, God is present, that everything, everything in my life is a miracle. And it's great to be conscious and aware and awake enough to see it and appreciate it and experience it and drink it in and then give it back out to the world again. I think we're reaching inward to discover that presence of God within. And, and like the water, we have to do that consistently. See, because out of that consistency, a greater good comes forward in our life because we have greater faith, we have greater knowing. You know, I think we want to have control over our thinking because if life is for us, nothing Nothing can be against us. And look at how often we think of things that must be against us. Mm -mm. Let all of that go right now. Life, God, spirit, truth, the universe is absolutely for us. But my part in this is to sense that divine presence and remind myself life is for me. The universe is for me. Mm, right? Now is the time. We, we, we want to not deny the good that we say we desire. People often say to me, oh, this is just so good to be true, or this is too good to last. And it's like, no, no, we have it wrong. See, when good things happen, we have to know that good is the hallmark of God. So when something good happens, we say, wow, this is so good, it must be true. And when bad happens, we have to say, eh, this is going to pass. This too shall pass. It's King Solomon, right? King Solomon's great statement, this too shall pass. So we don't deny the good that we say we desire, right? But what we want to do is have a level of acceptance where we're always in the flow. You know, we're always receiving and giving back out. Um, it, 
it occurs to me that there's no belief, no thought, no habit, no way of being within us that we couldn't change if we really wanted to. So maybe today, this is something, we, a gift we could give ourselves on Mother's Day, is identify some thought, belief, idea, habit, way of being that is not serving you right now. And wouldn't it be wonderful for all of us to just surrender that, to lay it down and never pick it up again? Mm -hmm. Because there's no thought, no belief, right, that our mind cannot change if we really want to and we're willing to do the work to change it, right? Because my conviction is life wills only what is good. The principle of life, God, spirit, wills only that which is good. And we cannot fail because God within us cannot possibly fail. You know, in the Bible, we're told again and again to overcome evil with good. And what Ernest Holmes teaches us in The Science of Mind is that we look away from conditions that now exist and accept better ones. And he says to get rid of a negative state, pour in the constructive opposite. So it always comes back to the same thing, that the light disappears the dark. Our job is to be the best example of the light that we can be. Dark cannot overcome good. It never happens. So I invite you to turn within me, with me now for a moment. We'll do a little bit of work in consciousness together. So let's be still and come together in an awareness of the divine presence, in a consciousness of the one, knowing that God is, and we are one with all that God is, I know that it's the natural outcome of an awareness of our oneness with God that all of our needs are always met. And so as we turn to this presence, let's put all other thoughts out of our mind and listen deeply and joyfully and expectantly. I believe in the power greater than I am. I believe in that power that's greater than all of us are. And I believe that the power of the divine presence in which I live and move and have my being is absolutely adding to my life and your life in every good and perfect way. I know we are guided this day by divine intelligence, that any question we have in mind, I know that God within us knows exactly what to do. And we stand as open, willing vessels to God's infinite loving wisdom. I know that we bless everyone we meet as life seems to open up more and more. I know that as we travel safely through our experience of life, that just bumping into others, we are a blessing. I know that we bring new life and new joy and new creativity to every situation that we contact. And with conviction, I affirm for each and every one of us that the power of the living spirit flows through us and makes perfect the way before each and every one of us. That we radiate love and joy and abundance to everyone and to everything. So we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. We bless our very own church and all of its members and congregants who we look forward to being together again soon. And we let our prayer be a blessing that wraps the entire globe. It touches all people everywhere, calling forth the highest and best within everyone. And so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I say thank you, God, that this is the truth, that we are blessed, that we are uplifted by being together. We are healed. And with a full heart, I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all.
right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I believe that everything is a miracle So it is my pleasure to express this optimism Lyrically, joyously, with buoyancy And share it abundantly Optimism is contagious Say it loud and sing it strong smiling face can make a difference where positive messages dance past the edges of doubt it's a ripple it's a movement it's a beating of drums oh and you can't help but move to its music Optimism is contagious Say it loud and sing it strong Optimism is contagious Pick it up and pass it on Rocks can be smooth And tides can be moved by the moon Disarmed and snakes simply charmed by a tune. It's a candle, it's a beacon, it's a comet, it's a constellation. Oh, oh. so let yourself go and bask in the glow of the illumination. Optimism is contagious.
Harold Payne, ladies and gentlemen. You can get Harold's music at Harold Payne, that's P-A-Y-N-E, music.com. Thank you so much. And thank you to our wonderful musicians, Sam Krieger and Karen Smith. As always. <laughs> so, uh, donations, uh, you make your donations over the phone if you weren't able to do so online. We'll be here for about 30 minutes after service. And that's at area code 818-762-7566. And we can take the donation by credit or debit card. You can also uh, go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And you can make a one-time or set up recurring donations there. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. One nine. And any way that you are continuing to contribute to this community, thank you so much. We so appreciate it. Prayer with a Practitioner is available via Zoom after service. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website and uh, get on the Zoom link, and we can connect you up with a practitioner one-on-one -on -one in a breakout room for prayer. You can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org. And you also have the option of calling into the church office. And option four on the menu allows you to leave a voice message uh, with your prayer request. And we check those every evening and send those out by email to all of our practitioners. So we're there to support you in prayer. Don't hesitate to take advantage of that. Wednesday evening service. Uh, our meditation, same links on Facebook Live and Zoom, and uh, meditation before service is at 6.50. Service starts at 7. And my topic this week is, you gotta laugh. <laughs> you just did. Oh, good. It's working. <laughs> our grief support group uh, that's facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. And so anyone going through any kind of grief right now, uh, they're all welcome. The link is uh, on our website. Also, it's not too late, but it is your last chance to sign up for our exciting new class, The Creative Life, that's facilitated by our very, very creative and wonderful Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. And this is a five-week class that started uh, last Tuesday. And it's at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And it's based on the book, The Creative Live, Seven Ways to Your Inner Genius by Eric Butterworth. And the cost is $100. Got nothing but rave reviews from those who are on meditation the next morning. So if you're interested in that, please sign up on the website by May 10th. And uh, because the students who want to join uh, will need to watch the recording of the class. Uh, prior to joining. OK, so you probably heard it from us last week. We're still announcing this. Yes, limited in-person attendance in the sanctuary begins next Sunday. So we're really excited to be opening in this capacity. So that's next Sunday, May 16th. There will only be one service, 945. And of course, we'll continue to broadcast on Facebook Live and Zoom as usual, but if you'd like to join us in person, you can make your reservation online beginning today at noon. Uh, if you can't do that online, then call the church office. And our Wednesday evening service will still only be offered on Zoom and Facebook Live at this time. Our Zoom virtual patio continues every Sunday and Wednesday, so you can join with your fellow congregants and visit 20 minutes before or hang out after the service. Our men's group continues to meet every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. And our Zoom meditation continues to meet every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15. For information on all of this and so much more, just visit our website nhcrs.org and you can get all the Zoom links to the different events and you can also sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So with that, 
Let's join together in singing the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.